Get started. Does that sound okay? Um, so, what's that? Maybe a little bit. Seems a little bit loud. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about 15 minutes. I even have a timer. I'm going to take about 15 minutes because I know I tend to go over the time. I'm going to take 15 minutes and just share a, a word of exhortation to us. And then I'm going to take 40 minutes and do the, the message today so you'll understand what that's about. So just want to explain that. So what, uh, and, and I want to do two different recordings. So this first recording is really going to be for us. And the next recording will be for us and anyone else who would listen. But uh, what, I, what I really want to come back to for us is from a few weeks back when I was preaching about consumer Christianity, moving from consumer Christianity to taking responsibility. Uh, it's so important that we make that transition. And uh, it's so, you know, we've become so accustomed to be, being consumers who go to church, hear a message, and then we go home and we forget about it. But God wants us to become a corporate body on the same level, with the same revelation, working together, who have become corporately. And I, know this, um, I know I've been a broken record saying that, but it, it's so important. And so um, what I want to do in this, in, in these, oh, I didn't start the timer, so it hasn't officially started. Now it's started. What I want to do is, is just explain to us, just real quick, about what I feel like God wants me to do over the, until the end of the year. Um, and also, excuse my cold, so I've had a cold all week, so if I sound like I'm talking with my nose stopped up, that's the reason why. But again, a couple weeks ago, I woke up in the morning around 5 a.m. with this unusual burden, and I knew, and I've done this enough to know, okay, this is the Lord. I woke up with this unusual burden that God really wanted us until the end of the year to get ownership of, the, of God's eternal purpose, to get ownership of the eternal blueprint. And so, um, and I said this in the message a few weeks ago, that we're moving from uh, 2000, where 2019 has been a year of transition, where we're shifting from blueprint mode into building mode. Uh, I believe the Lord wants us to end 2019 all on the same page in terms as it relates to God's eternal purpose. And so, um, I, what I believe the Lord is saying to us is as, this, as the uh, 2019 comes to a close, God is giving us a final window of opportunity to really understand His eternal purpose. And I, I mean really get it deep inside of our heart. Over the years, you know, I've learned pr revelation is progressive, is, is never ever think we've got the whole picture. God wants to take us deeper. God wants to bring us deeper into the revelation of God's eternal purpose. And so uh, I mentioned in that teaching that I was going to try to do the eternal blueprint, the book I wrote on God's eternal purpose into an audio book, but I tried it and I realized there is a reason why Anna wanted her mommy to read bedtime stories to her because I don't have that gifting. So what I am going to do instead is do more of a teaching, preaching review of the eternal blueprint that's not reading it word for word, but is kind of just preaching and teaching so you can get an overview of that. So as we, as we do that, um, it's going to be, you know, super easy for all of us to think, well, I've heard this a million times. And I know we, we, have, we have talked about God's eternal purpose until we're blue in the face. And I know it's easy to go, I've heard that a million times. But I want to challenge us, and I want us to think differently about something. I want us to think differently about how we listen. Because if we're in a consumer mindset, we're going to come and listen and go, I know that. Oh, I know that already. Oh, I remember he taught about that back then. I know that. Well, that's the thinking of a consumer. That's the thinking of someone who's coming to receive a quote-unquote teaching. But when we shift from consumer to, to a body taking responsibility, then we're going to listen differently so that we can be equipped. You see the difference? If you're listening to learn, that's one thing. If you're listening, and in, 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 in the end of learning is knowledge. Now, knowledge has its place because we can't get revelation knowledge until we have knowledge. But God wants to move us beyond just, uh, beyond just knowledge to revelation. 
Now, so I, I want to just, I want to just uh, emphasize to us, God is taking us and wanting to equip us as messengers and master builders. Every one of us. It doesn't matter if your influence is only in your family. It doesn't matter, you know, who knows what level of influence God's going to give you, but God wants you to function as a messenger and a master builder out, out of the corporate anointing. And so I want to encourage you, listen to this review as one who's going to be equipped as a messenger and a master builder not just as a consumer to hear a good message and go, well, that was good. That was interesting. I, I really like that message or I don't like that message or whatever. You're, you're, you're coming to be equipped. You're coming to be uh, imp imparted the truth of God's eternal purpose. Now, now I, I had all this written out of what I was going to share and I, and I read in Watchman Nee's book, and I highly recommend this book. It's called The Glorious Church by Watchman Nee. I don't know. He probably wrote it 70 years ago, 60, 70 years ago, but he said this that was so powerful and, and so relevant to, to what I'm talking about today. I want to read this quote from the Glorious Church by Watchman Nee. And again, he was so far ahead of his time. He said, what God desires to do, he will accomplish. What God has purposed in eternity past, eternal purpose, he will obtain in eternity future. But first there must be overcomers to bring in the kingdom. And then, and then there must be overcomers to bring in the new heaven and the new earth. Here's the problem. But the problem is, who will be the overcomers? And he says this, this is profound. To be an overcomer, we must have revelation. To be an overcomer, we must have revelation. If there's no revelation, it is easy to receive anything as a teaching. That is so powerful. See, if we don't have revelation of what I'm going to be talking about, it's so easy to just say, hey, this is just a teaching. This is just another teaching. We've heard this a million times. You know, move on to something new. And we can become so addicted to the euphoria of hearing a new teaching and the high that it brings that we never get equipped and change in our heart. See, for the overcomers to rise up, there has to be revelation, not just knowledge. See, a lot of us are operating based on knowledge, not revelation knowledge. And I, I want to encourage us, listen so that this, this teaching can become moved from knowledge to revelation knowledge. He, said, he goes on and he says, we must remember that knowledge can never produce fruit. Knowledge can never produce fruit. How right he is. That is so, I've seen it so often. Knowledge can never produce fruit. Only revelation is fruitful. The only thing that will produce fruit is revelation. He said, in, in order to have revelation, we must go to the high mountain. We cannot dwell in the plain. There's some difficulty in climbing a mountain because we must exercise our strength to climb. In other words, Watchman Nee is exhorting us and saying that if we just listen passively to something and we don't exert the effort to hear, then it's just going to become knowledge. He says, we cannot reach the peak unless we make some effort. May God grant us this spiritual attainment and deliver us from the low plane. We should not think that just being saved and not wanting anything more is enough. God must save us from this low level of living and show us his heart's desire. Powerful. And so I've got a slide here that you've probably seen a million times is the progression of where we want to go with the message of God's eternal purpose is we want to move from knowing it to owning it to living it to proclaiming it to multiplying it. And see, you can see if all you are is in the phase of knowing, then you're going to listen a certain way. But if you want to move from knowing to owning, or owning to living, you're going to listen differently. 
In fact, Jesus said in the parable of the sower, he said, take care how you listen. He said, take care how you listen. Luke 8, 18, he said, so take care how you listen. It's not a matter of listening. It's a matter of how we're listening. See, I want to ask you as we do this review of God's eternal purpose, as I want to ask you, are you listening to know an inf information? Or are you listening so you can own it and get revelation? See, I think there's like 18 inches between your head to your heart. Knowing is in your head, and that's information. Revelation is in your heart. That 18 inches of ownership makes all the difference in the world. And we want to move from knowing to owning because in owning is when we get revelation, and in getting revelation is when we are impacted. <clears throat> Jesus said in the parable of the sower, he said, these that fell away, they had no firm root in themselves. They were shallow. They had just heard the teaching, but they didn't have ownership of the teaching. And so I want to encourage you, listen to take ownership. Listen to take responsibility. Listen, not just to learn, but to get revelation. Listen to get it from your head to your heart. Listen so that it can get into your heart and produce transformation. See, <clears throat> there's, another, there's another way of listening, and that's to live it. I mean... Listen so that you can begin living it. I mean, if I had to estimate the percentages here, my best guess was maybe 95, I don't know if we know what the numbers are up there, but 95% of us, maybe, unless we've zoned out, have knowledge of God's eternal purpose by now, at least you, you should, hopefully. But owning it narrows it down to maybe, I don't know, uh, 40% where we're owning it where it's become our very own. It's not just a teaching, it's becoming a revelation. But living it narrows it down even further. I mean, how many of us, just, just be honest, how many of us are truly living God's eternal purpose? How many of us have allowed God's eternal purpose to become our life purpose? See, that number would go way down. Maybe 20% of us are beginning to live God's eternal purpose to where we're not trying to fit Jesus into our life, but Jesus is becoming our life. That's a massive difference. Stephen texted me this week and had a great word that kind of correlates with this. The word he received was, build your life around the kingdom and not the kingdom around your life. Very good, very true. You could also say, build your life around God's eternal purpose instead of your life, instead of God's eternal purpose around your life. See, God wants, uh, it is not enough just to know it and even to own it. God wants us to live it. That narrows it down big time. The Lord wants His eternal purpose to be the driving, consuming purpose that we live by. And so I want to encourage you, don't just listen to know, and don't just listen to own, but listen so that you can live that very purpose. So God's eternal purpose becomes your driving life purpose. Then it narrows down even further when it comes to proclamation. If you've ever had to teach, if you've ever had to speak or write, you listen very differently than you do if you're just going to come hear a message. When you start trying to articulate a message, you realize how little you really know. Every one of us, in some capacity, are called to proclaim God's eternal purpose. And that's going to come in your own personality, your own, you know, your own gifting, your own way. But if we don't have the ability to articulate that, if we don't have the ability to express it, to communicate it, see, I want to encourage you, listen, so that you can now explain and articulate God's eternal purpose. If someone asks you, okay, what is God's eternal purpose? Right now, a lot of us go, I don't know, here, read this book. But God wants to make us responsible to where we're equipped to proclaim God's eternal purpose. 
So I want to encourage you, listen, not just to know, not just to own, not just to live, but also so that you can proclaim it, so you can be a messenger, so you can be a master builder. And I would say probably 10% of us right now are actively proclaiming God's eternal purpose. I mean, it took us a long time to even figure out God has an eternal purpose, and we had a, it took us a long time to figure out what is God's eternal purpose. But God wants us to be messengers who are proclaiming God's eternal purpose. I mean, whether you're speaking to one person, whether you're speaking to your kids, whether you're speaking to hundreds or whatever, every one of us here are called to be proclaimers of God's eternal purpose. The final thing is multiply. That narrows it down even further. I mean, there's probably 1% of us right now who are multiplying God's eternal purpose. Disciples who are making disciples who are making disciples. But God's method has always been through multiplication. God's method has always been multiplying the seed. So I want to just, that's the backdrop for this message. We're going to be reviewing the eternal blueprint, and I'm going to, I'm going to be uh, sharing it to a wider audience, so I'm not going to, that's why I wanted to address that the way I did. But it's going to be a review of the eternal blueprint book, and, it's, and I'm saving you from me reading it, okay? So that's the introduction of what we're going to do, and six seconds, five seconds, two, one, Boom. Okay, so that was my 15 minutes. So some people didn't think I could do that, but I really can. <clears throat> okay, so we'll cut that one off.